Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today's lesson is making collision holes for your models for source and we're going to focus on uh, using some of the tools that are built in the Max and some of the tools that are built into the Wallworm set. So if you're not familiar with the collision hole, the collision hole is a simple mesh that your model uh, in game uses to determine whether uh, it collides with other things. And it has to be simplified because it makes the game work more smoothly. Now if you have a really complex mesh with a bunch of faces, it needlessly creates calculations. So if we take the teapot, we could probably optimize this into something a lot smaller. But even before we get to the optimization part, we have a problem. This mesh is concave. If you're not familiar with that, you should go to Wikipedia right now and look up the word concave. It's spelled right here for you. What we need to do is turn this into a convex mesh. And if you don't understand that term, again, you should go and look that up on Wikipedia, and here's the spelling for you. Now I'm going to show you how to create a really quick convex hole from this object, if you own the NVIDIA Physics plugin or Mass Effects. In your modifier stack, when you have your object selected, you will either go to the physics R body or you'll find mass effects R body, rigid body modifier. We'll go there and we can choose to use a mesh type of convex and hit, hit convert to custom mesh. If we do that, it's going to make a convex hole of this mesh. And as you can see, it doesn't really look like our object, but it fits the general outline, the outer hull of that object. If you just need to make a quick and dirty collision mesh, that is one way you can do it directly with just standard Max tools. You will notice, of course, that that is not the same shape as our object, and the collisions will not be accurate. Now, anyone who plays a lot of games will know what I'm talking about, that the frustration that this can cause in-game when you go to shoot another player or throw something through an area where it looks like you should be able to throw or shoot through, but you can't. The example here is if we want to shoot through this area between the spout and the body, it looks like we should be able to, but the collision hole does not let us. It's blocked. And now what we have to do is make a more complex collision hole. And in the source game engine, what we want to do is create one that is labeled uh, in the system as a concave hull, which is kind of a misnomer, but it's all right. The concave hull has to be made up of several smaller chunks, but each of those chunks still has to be convex. So you can't just make any arbitrary mesh into a concave hull. So I'm going to introduce you to a tool in Wallworm that allows you to take an object that you already have set as your model. We're going to pick this model here. We're actually going to take off the rigid body modifier we applied to it. So we have this mesh assigned as assigned to a wallworm model tool helper. If you go to the collision model and physics tab, you'll see a bunch of buttons and options that you may start learning to use. There's a one that was introduced not too long ago. It's called Quick Hall. Now again, this function will only work under these circumstances. You have to have a version of Max that has the NVIDIA Physics plugin or Mass Effects, or you have to own Convexity from Maple3D.com. When you have a model that has multiple elements, now an element, if you don't know, is a certain sub-element level of your object. In this case, this, this teapot here has several elements, and they're broken up into the body, handle, spout, and lid. If I convert this to an editable poly and I click on the element mode, you'll see I can select each one of these. Now this is important to understand the way Quick Hall works. Quick Hall will make one convex hull for each element of each object in your model. So right now we only have one model and one object in our model. We're going to go ahead and add another object to our model and this one is going to be a cone and we'll add it like this and to add it multiple objects to your model 
we just have this model selected, this extra object, and hit Add Cell. Now that model is assigned to our object also. Now that I have this, I have a teapot with several sub-elements, and I have this cone, which only has one sub-element. So what we're going to do just to demonstrate this is convert this to an edible poly. And we're going to take this top part, and we're going to detach this as an element. So now this object has two elements. Okay? And to demonstrate how this is going to work, we're going to rescale this up, this top part. So now this object has two elements. And both of these objects are assigned to this wall worm helper. Now that we're in the collision hole tool, we can click Quick Hull. Now there's a spinner right above it called Max Vert's Hulls. What this says is that each hull, each, each element of this can be turned into a hull with a maximum vertices of 44. You can change this number to whatever you want. The lower the number, the more optimized the mesh is, but the less realistic. The higher the number, the more realistic, but the less optimized for gameplay purposes. I'm just going to go ahead and click the quick call button right now and it will have created several chunks. Now I need to point out also that when this happened it automatically checked this flag here called concave. That's important if you have multiple pieces of holes it needs to have that flag checked or the hole will not work as you want in game. So that's the simple way to do it and this works really well for uh, many types of models. However, again you may have situations where this isn't going to work because you can't break up your model uh, into elements because that will affect uh, smoothing groups and things like that and you sometimes can't do it by breaking them up into models from your main meshes. So I'm going to demonstrate another tool that's part of Wallworm and you can get it to it in a couple places. One, in the Wallworm Model Tools UI in the Collision Model and Physics you'll see a button here called Wallworm Hall Helper click that it brings up the little UI. You can also get to that through the Wallworm menu under Wallworm, Wallworm Utilities, Wallworm Hall Helper. What it will do is create a copy of a certain set of objects and allow you to immediately start turning those into hulls. So in this case I have a model here that has two objects. They're two separate objects, a teapot and this ring of that come out from it, extrusions. What I need to do is select all the models that I'm going to be working with and I'm going to hit this button that says prepare from selection. When I do that it actually made a copy of the selection and hit it. So what I have here now is a copy and I'm also immediately in polygon sub element mode. The reason for this is that the tool set wants you to start selecting areas to detach as elements. Now this object is mostly already detached because we have the teapot, let's go into element mode, we have the teapot, the body parts, which I actually already broke up, we have uh, the body, bottom part of the body, we have each of these extrusions which I've made into their own individual elements. In this case, as you can see in the hall in the background, the handle became one convex chunk because it has to make a shell basically around that object. Now, if I want to make it so that you can shoot through this handle, I have to break that up some. So the way this tool set works is you go into polygon mode and start selecting areas of your model that you want to turn into individual pieces. So in this case, I might start selecting pieces of my model here. Actually, let me let me hide some of this. All right. So I'm going to take this and I've got this piece selected 
Now I know that I want this to be uh, a individual piece. So all I need to do is here is hit detach. What it's doing is it detaches it as an element and then immediately hides it so I don't need to worry about looking at it again. Now this piece, I may want to turn this into one and we're going to leave that as one right there. That one's already fine. We may want to do the same with the spout here. We may say, you know what, this needs to be broken up like this. Detach. And that part is already is already fine. Or we may want to refine it some more so you can shoot through this little area here. Detach. And that will be just fine right there. Unhide all will bring back all of the pieces. Now if we go to element mode we can start clicking on these again and each of these elements is going to become its own hull. I may look up here and say you know what the top part also needs to be broken up a little bit. So in this case I would go back to polygon mode and I might just select the top here. I might hit detach and I'm gonna unhide all. So now I think I have it how I want it. At this point I can hit create holes from selection. Again, you see the spinner here that has the maximum number of vertices that will be in each hole. I can change it to whatever one. I'm going to leave it at the default for now. I'm going to hit create holes from selection. And now it made a hole that fits the shape of this model. So at this point you would assign this mesh to your model. Let's go back here and look at this complex shape here. Again, if we were to take this and create a hull around it, a convex hull, it would not really match the shape we want here. It would be way too many areas that are getting blocked physically that you can see through. It would not be realistic for the user. So you're going to have to break up something like this. We're going to again use the hull helper to demonstrate how you would do this. I'm going to hit prepare from selection. Now remember it made a copy of this object and immediately went to polygon sub-element mode. Now it's got selected the faces that I had last selected in the mesh. That's fine. I'm going to click on one of these extrusions and I'm going to hit grow because that's the shape that I want right there. Now I'm going to hit detach. And basically you can just keep doing this kind of stuff until your model is generally the shape that you need breaking up into the chunks that are gonna uh, be valid for what you're making. And the purpose that I'm doing this is to show you kind of the idea of how to visualize how you should be breaking up the mesh, something like this. And in this situation, I have to make a judgment call. It doesn't really matter, but you can decide, do I break it up this way so that this is a piece? Do I break it up this way so it's like that? Either way really doesn't matter. It, it could potentially matter if your model is rigged and you have to put bones to it and it has to animate a certain way. But that's fine. I'm just going to do what I have there. So now I've broken it up into all these different pieces. If I unhide all go to element mode I can see that I can just select those different chunks so we're gonna start off by creating from selection and it's gonna create all the collision holes that we need and then there's this process selected what it does actually already automatically happens when you press this create from holes create holes from selection but this tool you can use independently what it will do is apply unique smoothing groups to each element inside of your mesh and apply a material to it because for some reason 
those are things that have to be done to export as a concave mesh for source, a collision hull for source. But to demonstrate this one in game, what we're going to do here, we're not going to bring it in game, but we'll bring it in model viewer. We're going to pick this mesh, and I'm going to call this hull example, and we're going to keep this in these paths. What I'm going to do now is assign this hull to this object. I need to select all these pieces here and hit add CM cell and now all of those pieces are part of this hull. So if I hide them, it's going to hide them all and going to show them and going to show them all. Now they're not lined up correctly. That's fine. You can line them up. In reality I would have used one that's already in the exact same place but I'm just eyeballing it for this. So we have a hull here. We need to check that it's concave. It didn't do it automatically because I built this hull outside of this object. Now all we have to do is export our model and open up our SDK. So we saved this into wallworm slash test and called it hull example. Let's load up wallworm. Folder called wallworm, then in a folder called test. And we called this hall example. And here is the mesh. Now again, we didn't texture it. That's not really a problem. We're going to go to physics model. And you can see that it's showing you the shape of the physics model here. And it's fully convex slash con it's concave in terms of the system, but each piece is still convex. So I want to show you a couple more things in here, just some features inside of Wallworm. One is this uh, hall count button. If you click it when you currently have a model with a hall selected, it will tell you how many pieces. So this model has 16 pieces you can see right there. Another thing is, let's go to the Wallworm settings. There are a couple of things in here that deal with the way halls are, are done. There's this menu here for co expensive collision models. Depending on the engine you're working for, you may want to change this from max convex pieces to full collide. That's how it handles uh, having a lot of pieces in your hull. There's also this option that says processed hulls become non-renderable. Uh, that is just a convenience issue when you make hulls and process them. There's no need to see them when you render the scene. If you're wanting to hide those, you'll need to click that and they'll automatically become non-renderable. However, I do want to point out that if you have this option over here selected, export non-renderable mesh as bones, it can have an adverse effect. So these two options do uh, kind of conflict with each other at times, so you have to understand those. Just go to the docs and read. And also the whole generator radio options you can choose whether to use the physics engine to create your holes or convexity. Um, you have to own convexity, which you can get at maple3d.com to use this option. Or you can use the physics one, which comes with the latest versions of 3ds Max under the name Mass FX. You can also go to the NVIDIA's developer site and download it for other versions of Max. I hope you've learned something here. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website seanolson.net and you can find more of my tools and resources at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.